So you've got some new salespeople on your team and you need to have their first training, but maybe not quite sure what are the most effective things to put in. Stay tuned today because I'm gonna show you how to conduct an effective sales training session. Walker Client Acquisition Specialist and welcome to my channel. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can get notified every time we release new content, which is three times a week. So here's the deal. We all know that sales training is really, really critical, but sometimes we're not exactly sure what to put in, um, how to make it as efficient and effective as possible, and how do we set our sales team up for success because if you've ever had the frustration of having the wrong salesperson on your team or they just get off to a slow, sluggish, sluggish start, you know, it's not the best. So today I'm going to share with you the five things that I cover inside of my sales trainings when I'm onboarding a new salesperson. And I'm also going to give you my tips for how to get them on the phone as fast as possible. The first thing that I want you to kind of get in your head is that sales training is a process, not an event. That's really important. Sales training is a process, not an event. Remember that and you'll be off to a really good start. When I do my training with my new sales team members, the first thing I do is I, I set up a training. This is their initial onboarding conversation. We're gonna record it. They're gonna be able to use it as a playback. But then also for the first couple of weeks, we're doing regular check-ins to see how are they doing? How is it going? What questions have they had? And I'm giving them that opportunity to engage and communicate. We also have weekly sales team meetings. And so we're doing every single week, ongoing from now until the end of eternity, we're doing training every single week. So we're training on a different area, making improvements. And so there's a, a pendulum, I think, where sometimes people want them to just get to work and learn on the go, and they don't really do a formal training. They just kind of jump in, throw them in, and say, you know, here's your list or make your list and go after your contacts. Here's your script. Here's everything you need. Go. And they push them out the door. And on the other side, there's these really long, like multi-day trainings. And I really think you got to be in the middle. You want your training to be as short and effective as possible so that they can get on the phones as quickly as possible. Cause I could train you for days, but until you actually are on the phone, having a conversation, it's not really going to sink in. You're not really going to grasp the whole concept. So here are my five things that I put into my training. And I start with number one is your culture and your core values. That is the foundation from which I run everything in my organization. And so I start off and I, it's not necessarily long or drawn out, but I always start off my trainings with talking about our culture, our core values, how we show up, how we treat each other, how we treat our clients, because that's the foundation upon which we build everything. The second thing that I train on is product knowledge. So this is where I go over what products they are going to be selling. If you sell a physical product, this is a great place to do a demo. If you sell an info product, this is a great place to maybe show them some clips or show them some testimonials, break down what's included in them. Who are they a right fit for? Um, what is the experience like? And really help them get as on board with the product as possible. Because here's the deal. It doesn't matter how good they are. If they don't connect with your product, they might sell well for somebody else, but not sell well for you. They need to be passionate about what they're selling in order to really be great as a contributor on your team. So we got to get them up to speed on the products as quickly as possible. If you sell an info product, can you give them access to it? Can you let them kind of take a sneak peek or audit one of your classes so that they can start to get a feel for your material as quickly as possible? If it's a physical product, can you give them some? Like, can they actually try it and test it and be having their own great experiences with it? The third thing I train on is my systems. And so this is actually getting them into your CRM. This is teaching them, you know, how to find their leads, um, how to take notes, how you want them to document when somebody goes from one stage in the pipeline to the next, but actually training them on that system. Here's why I don't do this first, because this is not the fun part of the training. This is kind of the overwhelming part. This is the part where you can see some of them are like, oh, this is not 
as fun as I was hoping and it's harder than I thought. And so if we've gone over, you know, our values and who we are as a team and our culture and they're like excited about that. And then we've gone over, you know, our products and they're excited about that, then they can handle some systems training. So this is really left brained and this is really kind of process oriented. The way that I train on this is I'll show them how to do a few things and then I'll have them do those few things. And then I show them how to do a few more things and then I have them do those more things. I do not do a full training on the entire system. I only train in this session on the things that they need to know how to do in order to get on the phones right away. For example, I don't even train them on like how to process the entire order on this call because I know they're not going to be selling anything until they've actually scheduled some sales calls. So I even put like priority on let's spend our time focusing on how to use the system to do sales calls. Like I'm, I'm really focused around let's get them on the phone as fast as possible and let's make that training digestible. So if there's three ways to accomplish one task, teach them one way. Um, if there's a bunch of things that they will do once every six months, don't show them how to do those things. So we're just really trying to get them as functional as we can as quickly as possible. The fourth thing that I train them on is scripts. And this is where I think we should be spending the most amount of time and where sometimes I make mistakes. Because by this point, um, we've been on the train for a little, or on the, the call for a little while, and um, they are a little overloaded because we just trained on the systems, and now we need to do scripts. And so the tendency is to just want to say the scripts are there, you can read them, and you can go through them. And I'm telling you, like, I, I can think of times when I've done that and afterwards been like, we really should have done some more role play. So this is the time where you actually want to go through the script, you want to practice. Um, it's not comfortable for them. And I'm telling you, they always will want to say too, oh, it's cool, I got it. Like I've done a lot of scripts, done a million scripts in my day. Just give me the script and I'll go and I'll practice it. Don't do it, fight the urge, run through it. Because until you actually get a feel for how they're sounding on the script and they get a chance to get those words in their mind, it's not really going to sink in. And so that's an important part. You want them to be sounding good on the phone. You want them to hear how you sound on the phone. So role play back and forth where you both get to play different sides of the conversation and that will help you to get them ready to get on the phone sooner. When I have missed that step, what happens is they don't feel ready to get on the phone for days. And I want them to get on the phone that day. Like my goal is that they do their first 15 phone calls um, before we get back together tomorrow for a check-in. So I want them to be on the phone as fast as possible and I really do need to hear how they're sounding. So that role play is critical. And also it's not the only time it should happen. We should be doing role plays on a regular basis instead of our training calls each week. All right, number five is processing orders. Now, I told you a little bit earlier that I might not even teach them the full process of you know how to process an order and how to do everything, but I am gonna show them enough that if they get somebody who says, yeah, I wanna buy that, that they know what to do next. And so, um, for example, maybe you have a place where they enter in the order and then you have another place where you start the onboarding process. Maybe just teach them how to enter the order so they can get to that point and then they can call and say, okay, I just closed my first deal, what comes next? So um, I, I do teach them what to do when they get an order and it might not be 100% of the steps, but I teach them what to do when they get an order so they don't feel worried about it. This is the most important thing is you've got to get them on the phones fast. You got to get them out there making calls quickly. The longer they wait to get into the mix of calls, the more likely that they're not going to work out. And that is just the honest truth. If they're not on the phone dialing within that first week um, and you don't see that they're starting to generate some conversations, the reality is they're probably not going to work out in my experience. So we want to get them out and on that phone as quickly as possible. So I try for this initial training to be about two to three hours. Then I have them spend the next two hours working on their script and making phone calls and practicing entering those into the system. And then the next day we'll get together again and we'll do a shorter training call, which is a check-in call. 
How did your calls go? Let's talk through what did people ask you that you didn't know how to answer? Let's see if everything got updated correctly in the system. And then you can look in the system and you can see how they did. And that is the fact that they got on the phone really quickly. Then you can say, okay, now today let's make 30 calls. Let's make 50 calls, whatever that looks like in your business. But you're setting that intention that they're going to be getting on the phones, getting out there, doing reach outs, having conversations as quickly as humanly possible. We want them on as quick as possible. All right, friends, I think that pretty much covers it. If this was helpful, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Make sure that you uh, leave me any questions that you have. I would be happy to answer for those for you. If you have not done it yet, please come over and join us in our private Facebook group, the Acquire Group. We focus on client acquisition strategies and how to help you grow your business faster. And if you have not gotten it yet, I invite you to go to www.salesaremything.com and you can download a copy of my book for free, the I'm Not a Salesperson sales book. The reason why you want it is because it has all my sales scripting templates in there and um, tips on how to help anybody be more successful in sales. So it's a great resource to study with your team to help them get the mindset, the skill set, and the activity going together. And again, it's free. So go check it out. And thank you so much for being here. If you haven't done it, subscribe. Can't wait to see you back again soon. Thanks.